So here Lord Kapil Amuni is continuing to speak to her mother, his mother, Devahuti, mm-hmm. upon the questions that she put forward. She specifically requested to know that what kind of uh, devotional service that she has to be practicing so that she can quickly attain uh, the lotus feet of the Lord. And in pursuance of that question, Kapila Muni has been answering, instructing the Mother Devahuti. And in the previous verse, uh, Kapila Muni narrated about uh, how devotees of the Lord are attracted to the activities of the Lord. They appreciate the activities of the Lord. In fact, in the beginning of uh, his instruction, he mentioned that devotees appreciate in the assembly of uh, the devotees, they appreciate the activities of the Lord. Satam Prasanga Mama Virya Samnida. And similarly, devotees of the Lord appreciate the form of the Lord as well, his activities, just like in this verse, it is spoken about the form of the Lord. So non-devotees cannot understand the form and activities of the Lord. Just like in this verse, it is mentioned, Pashyanti te me ruchirani amba santaha. The verse, the word here, ruchirani santaha, very specifically mentioned here, which means that the devotees of the Lord they are attracted to the form of the Lord. They are attached to the, they appreciate the form of the Lord. On the contrary, non-devotees cannot understand. They don't appreciate the form of the Lord. Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, he says, Namam duskritino mudaha prapadyante naradhama So a muda or a fool or a non-devotee or a Dushkitana. Rupa translates Dushkitana means miscreant. He is a miscreant because he has not accepted the superiority of Krishna, superiority of the activities and form of the Lord. So they can't understand the activities and form of the Lord. And for such kind of people, he is reserved. He doesn't reserve, he doesn't reveal his identity. Further in Bhagavad Gita, he says that I am reserved to the non-devotees, to the mudaha. So, param bhava majananto, my superior nature won't be understood by the mudas. So, <clears throat> yet Lord, He appears in this uh, material world. He is present in this world in the form of uh, energies, in the form of His energies. He is present in the form of Paramatma. But, he reveals to his uh, devotees, <coughs> reveals his identity, reveals his nature, and he appears in various forms. And he is able to be seen by the devotees because the devotees are oriented with the love and devotion towards the law. When Brahma Samhita, Brahma says, Santas Sadaiva Hridayeshu Vilokayanti Premanjuna Churita Bhakti Vilochanena. So, devotees of the Lord, they try to see the Lord, the heart, through the eyes oriented with devotional love, with love and devotion. So, a devotee can see, although a non devotee also can, he sees the wonderful things in the creation. Because Lord's creation is wonderful. Within this creation, there are many wonderful uh, things which a devotee or non devotee both are able to see. But a non devotee won't be able to see the Lord's hand behind uh, that creation. And a devotee is able to see how the Lord is wonderfully 
performing or uh, maintaining everything within this uh, creation and how he is creating wonderful things within this uh, cosmic manifestation so a non devotee is unable to see the hand behind the uh, uh, creation the hand of the lord behind this creation because of his uh, sinful uh, nature krishna says esham tu antagatam papam jananam punya karmana unless one takes up to the process of uh, regulated devotional service one cannot uh, see the hand of lord within this creation because of sinful nature the non devotees will not able to see the lord's hand behind this creation and that's why krishna says that he demands that you first of all surrender to me sarva dharman parityajya mam ekam sharanam vaya first of all you surrender to me and then i will take care of your nullifying your sinful reactions and once freed from sinful reaction one will be able to see that how lord is there behind this creation so that's what we are trying to understand here and propad is elaborating here in this purport propad says here in this purport that mayavadi is an atheist except the form of the deities in the temple of lord as idols so mayavadi is an atheist they can't uh, comprehend that the process of deity worship that is been carried on in the temples of the lord are uh, are an authorized and authentic process of uh, worshiping the lord they consider it as an idol worship in many temples you now many people don't know the meaning of the word idol most of the temples we see when we visit temples the right photography of idols not are prohibited so the dictionary meaning of idol means one which is imaginary recently i was trying to understand more clearly what exactly dictionary says so it said false god so that is understanding of uh, the mayavadis they consider the form that is worshiped in the temple is an idol because the mayavadis understand that their understanding is that 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 absolute truth is a impersonal feature the absolute person the absolute truth is not a person he is an impersonal uh, feature but yet we see that in the uh, shankarites uh, in the followers of shankaracharya or the smarthas they take up to the process of pancha upasana they worship the five forms uh, uh, in the form of uh, surya in the form of uh, they worship the uh, form of uh, surya shiva durga ganesha and also vishnu as well so their understanding is that in conditioned state that original absolute truth which is actually originally impersonal but in the conditional state one imagines the personal form of that uh, impersonal feature of the lord and once liberated then there is no need then there is no need of taking up to the process of worshiping any form this is their uh, understanding this is the understanding of maya vada and what is liberation according to them liberation means to merge in the form of the lord this is called sayujya mukti but in real sense they actually don't merge in the form of the lord they actually merge in the the brahma jyoti <coughs> this brahma jyoti is the effulgence emanating from the form of the lord the transcendental form of the lord and devotees of the lord they don't aspire such kind of uh, uh, liberation and the devotees of the lord they take pleasure in serving the transcendental form of the lord and for them such kind of liberation is as good as hell kaivalyam narakayate so devotees of the lord they are 
very much uh, attracted and attached to the personal form of the lord unlike the mayavadis and similarly the atheist the atheist don't believe in existence of the lord altogether and forget about uh, accepting the worship of the form of the lord so in that sense the mayavadis are little more dangerous than uh, the atheists atheists bluntly say there is no god but mayavadis say that lord has no form lord has no eyes lord has no hands they don't have uh, they don't have face so it is like mayavadi har krishna ra aparada chaitanya mahaprabhu says so if suppose someone says us that you don't have eyes it is like saying that you are a blind if someone says you don't have legs it is like saying that you are a lame it is indirectly saying that no you are a blind you are a lame you don't have a form so we get offended if someone says that that you are a blind we immediately get a little offended right so then that sense mayavadis are actually offenders it is to directly say up front that there is no god there is no existence of god there is no god but mayavadis they say that there is no form lord doesn't have any eyes they don't they say that lord has no form they don't have any hands legs and so on like that he is simply an impersonal feature so that's uh, the uh, importance here that propad is trying to further narrate then if uh, devotees don't follow if the worship of the process of worship that devotees if it is not uh, uh, idol worship then what is that that propad further narrates in his purport that the process of worship that which the devotees undertake in the temples is uh, the archa form the archa form is a form which we can worship in the present condition and our present condition is that we can't see anything beyond matter our senses are so dull and blunt that we can't perceive any spiritual uh, substance forget about uh, the supreme lord propa says we can't even we can't even see the spirit soul which is occupying the body so when the body when the soul quits this body and uh, it moves out of this body we are not able to see this we don't we are no no none of us are able to see the spirit soul and seeing the spiritual form of the lord is far far uh, you know uh, away from the reality for us because our senses are material and it can perceive only material objects so that's why lord appears in a form which is favorable for devotees to see to worship to serve to he accepts he appears through a material form accepting a material form through which he can receive the service although his form is not material for lord there is no difference between matter matter and spirit the material elements are also his energy and the and the form which is made out of material elements are also spiritual from the perspective of the lord there is no difference between matter and spirit for the lord so he appears in this uh, form so that he facilitates for the people in this world to accept to serve the lord so propad gives a very nice uh, uh, example to understand uh, this concept of uh, archa vigraha in the in the little uh, older ages low, earlier ages we know that at least few decades before there is to be a concept of uh, the post box although we don't see them quite often these days but we can still see the post offices so post office still exist 
although we don't see the post box anymore because of the modernization of the communication uh, channel there are various better ways technologies are available people can send mail we can send in whatsapp any letter we want to send there is a very uh, better uh, technology available today but nonetheless this the post offices to facilitate the people in the city or in the villages at a distant places suppose if the post box is very nearby it is go it is very easy to go and deliver the letter to the post office directly but having known that that people live very far away and it is not practical for people to come everyone to come to the post office to deliver the letter to send it to the end uh, receiver so the post offices facilitates post boxes at villages at the cities so that people can go and drop the letter there in the post box and by dropping that it is ensured that it will directly reach the post office and further it is delivered to the end receiver similarly lord knowing that people in this uh, world they are not spiritually visioned they are not they have not awakened their spiritual vision so lord appears in a form through which he can accept the services of the conditioned souls in this uh, material world so just by uh, delivering the post or reaching out to the post box one can reach out to the post post office similarly simply by serving the form the archa vigraha form one one's service to the archa vigraha form is as good as serving the lord who is residing in the spiritual world so simply by offering an arti to the lord it means it is as good as offering the arti to the lord who is residing in vaikuntha in the goloka vrindavana by offering the lord in the form of the deity the bhoga the naivedya or dressing him nicely it is as good as he is worshiping the lord in his spiritual world so that is the magnanimity of the lord that he descends in this uh, uh, form made out of uh, earth clay sometimes with the form of uh, metal in form of a wood through the process of uh, injunction that is given in the scriptures again that is not a imaginary or a uh, or a form which is concocted it is as per description or the process that is uh, given in the uh, vedic scriptures by taking up to this process one directly connects with the the supreme lord who resides in the spiritual world so knowing this the spiritual master propad here in this purport he says that it is a duty of the spiritual master to engage the devotees in the process of cleansing the temple in the process of worshiping the deities anyone knows we sing this every day in our prayers shri vigrahara dhana nityanana shringara tanman dira marjanado the spiritual master engages his disciple in various activities of deity worship in the temple worship although in the kali yuga in the current yuga lord it may not be practical for someone say in the we are residing in a temple so we are so much fortunate that we are able to worship the deities in the temple daily but that is the magnanimity of uh, the lord people can come here and worship him and lord even more magnanimously he appears in the form of a sound incarnation and even those who are not able to come to the temple for him also he is appearing in the form of the sound the archa the form of uh, the holy name right so but the spiritual master knowing even the difficulties of the people to practice the impure state of the mind and to facilitate the devotees 
to quickly advance in devotional service the spiritual master facilitates the process of uh, deity worship he trains his disciples in the process of deity worship so that he can quickly purify and advance in devotional service so prabhupad introduce a blend of uh, deity worship and uh, the sankirtana process of worship actually in the process of deity worship the deity is worshiped through the sankirtana process when we worship the lord we see always sankirtana is accompanied along with that worship throughout the day we see that uh, the deities are graced with uh, sankirtana they are worshiped with uh, sankirtana that's why sometimes when the de- devotees are not available at the prescribed uh, schedule to perform sankirtana the temple commander becomes serious where are the devotees why are they not there because that is a important process of deity worship where lord is worshiped through the sankirtana process that is a blend that uh, prabhupad has implemented in this institution the blend of deity worship along with the sankirtana process and by doing so one can quickly advance in devotion service and prabhupad says here the deities will reciprocate to the devotees so devote, the deities are not uh, just uh, a standing uh, statue as the atheist and mayavadis they claim it's an idol it is not so is a supreme personality of godhead who is residing in his original form in the spiritual world the same form is residing here in that archa swarupa and he will reciprocate to the devotees there are various instances where deities talk to the devotees proper says here uh, and the devotees express their minds before the deity and in many instances the deity also gives answers so lord reciprocates lord replies but one must be very elevated devotee in order to be able to speak with the supreme lord one has to be elevated devotee it cannot happen uh, uh, artificially oh lord talks so i will also talk to the lord artificially one cannot uh, imitate uh, in a way how the, so the lord the deities reciprocate to the pure devotees there are various past times there are many instances where deity speaks to the uh, pure devotees lord in the form of uh, sakshi gopal he comes to give witness to his devotees a lord in vrindavan in the form of uh, madana mohana he speaks to sanatan goswami we know that so when sanatan goswami was offering a mere uh, saltless roti so the deity is uh, the deity of madan mohan who was earlier known as gopal ji so he would uh, petition to sanatan goswami that you are every day offering me this dry tasteless without salt rotis so that is a reciprocation of the deities with the pure devotees now we may ask okay lord will reciprocate to the pure devotees he will speak to the pure devotees and what about us how does he reciprocate to we sadakas once in lecture stoka maharaj he was mentioning that how deities can even even deities will even reciprocate to the sadakas like us so maharaj said that lord will reciprocate to us through the enthusiasm inflicting the enthusiasm within our hearts when we have enthusiasm when we have more and more enthusiasm in our heart it means the deities are reciprocating to us to our service so that is a way we can see that lord even will reciprocate to sadaka also and more we do our sadhana nicely take up to the process of uh, chanting and hearing take up to the uh, process of chanting and hearing in a regulated process in a regulated way the deities will reciprocate to us by giving us more enthusiasm to serve him more so more enthusiasm means serving more opportunity to the serve the lord propas elsewhere says if the regulative principles of chanting and hearing is not strictly followed then gradually the process of deity worship will become a burden galagraha galagraha means gala means neck 
right a burden on the neck sometimes when we sit in front of the desktop for long hours for now after some point of time we feel strain in the neck so similarly if we don't follow the regulative principles of chanting and hearing strictly then uh, propa says that my spiritual master has left behind the deities and we will start seeing perceiving the worship of deities or taking care of the deities as a burden so what is important is one has to strictly follow the rules and regulations of chanting and hearing so if this process of chanting and hearing is thoroughly without any uh, compromise is followed then we can quickly advance in devotion service along with the process of uh, deity worship so that is uh, what is an important thing that we should understand here that it is so important to take up with the process of uh, the deity worship and lord is ready to reciprocate to us but non devotees propa says an atheist cannot understand uh, these dealings between the lord and his devotees because of his uh, sinful tendencies so that is a process that is recommended here we can see here some of the important aspects of uh, deity worship and uh, how the devotees of the lord they are attracted to the wonderful form of the lord prasanna vaktra runa lochanani they are eager to see the various uh, different forms of the lord the lord also appears in various different forms ramadi murti shukalani amen atishtan and lord appears through the prayers through the invitation of uh, a pure devotee lord will not manifest in the form of archa vigraha just because, just by purchasing a, a deity from the market and placing here lord will appear through the invitation and prayer of uh, a pure devotee and we have seen many instances where propar has been personally you know taking up uh, to the process of uh, deity installation through the process of sankirtana sometimes unlike in indian tradition the process of deity worship is uh, different especially if you see the de- the shri vaishnava tradition of uh, installing the deities very elaborate rituals are performed but in the western world when propar installed the deities it's simply through the process of uh, sankirtana propar is to install the deities so lord will appear with the prayer with the sankirtana prayer of uh, the pure devotee so following his footsteps so following his instructions so the devotees of the lord they worship the wonderful form of the lord in various forms lord has unlimited forms his form of narsimha his form of rama his form as varaha and all these forms are benevolent that's what propad what this what kapila muni is saying rupani divyani vara pradhani so these forms are benevolent 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 in the way that they give an opportunity to serve that's what we can understand here it's a very important verse where it specifies the importance of uh, worshiping the form of the lord we'll stop here grantaraj shrimad bhagavatam ki jagat guru shila prabhu pad Thank mm-hmm. you.